You might have heard it in the news, but armies around the world, especially the US, use a type of weapon system that has depleted uranium. Of course, there are types of weapons that have uranium, especially radioactive material that's given off after it's exploded. But we are not really sure what depleted uranium is. So in this video, we want to figure out what depleted uranium weapons are and what kind of damage they bring to the enemy. In the last few decades, tanks were probably the most important asset in a military. And every country that was powerful were always trying to make their tanks better and better just so they can one-up the competition. Alongside the tank, they also tried to make the weapons of the tank better and better. In the 1980s, the American weapon industry invent a new form of bullets, or should I say shells for tanks. And it fit this tank, the M1 Abrams. This is the bullet we've all been waiting for, the depleted uranium. The nickname given to these weapons is actually deadly darts. Why did they use a deadly type of material for these types of weapons? You might have heard it in the Afghanistan and Iraq war that they're using this type of material. So depleted uranium is the same thing as uranium-238. The same uranium you can naturally find in nature. If you've seen our video about uranium, you'll know that uranium is one of the hardest metals in the universe. And you cannot find an element in the universe that's natural, that's heavier than uranium. And that's the main reason the US military industry decided to go with uranium for this type of weapon. And it's specialized in piercing armor in tanks. One of the most advanced tanks in the world is the M1 Abrams. The M1 Abrams can see two kilometers away from it and watch out around it. And it could directly fire at it with the accuracy of 90%. The most amazing thing about that statistic is that the M1 can do that while it's running and while the target is moving. It's not like it could only do it when it's stationary. And that's why a lot of experts believe that the M1 Abrams is the most accurate tank in the world. If you go to General Dynamics Land Systems, the company that made the M1 A1 Abrams, they charge $10 million per tank. But that's only for the United States military. If you're a foreign ally to the United States and want to buy one of these tanks like Saudi Arabia or Egypt, you're looking to pay $24 million for each tank. But let's leave the M1 and talk about the weapon of choice, the uranium depleted rounds. A normal tank could puncture 400 millimeters of armor. 400 millimeter is no joke, that's 40 centimeters. When you turn the clock forward and you get to when the Soviet Union designed the T-80 tank, this is when the United States Pentagon got a little nervous because they believe that the armor on this tank is greater than 400 millimeters and no weapon can puncture it. This is when they got the idea that they have to create a weapon that surpasses 400 millimeters and it could puncture much more than that. So the T-80 is not a threat. And this is when they got a little creative in terms of element usage. And this is when different engineers figure out that uranium is probably the best metal to use in a situation like this. The heaviest element in the universe was the right choice because uranium darts could puncture 570 millimeters or 57 centimeters of armor. Designing rounds like this for a tank was extremely classified at that time because they couldn't let anybody know that they have such weapons. Like in the 1990s when the Persian Gulf War started, 
the Iraqi army brought their tanks in front of the American ones and they didn't know what the US army is packing in their tanks. These uranium rounds were like a joke compared to the tank because they would go right through it with ease and they could be destroyed with one round from kilometers away. If the Iraqis knew that the Americans had such weapons, they would never come in front of the firepower of this type of tank because they knew they don't stand a chance. But since they didn't know about the uranium rounds, they went ahead and got in front of the line. The coolest part about this round is that when it's shot, it will travel for two miles straight without dropping a beat. The gravity doesn't even have an effect on it for that long. Having a round like this available to your army in the 1990s, meaning the Persian Gulf War, is extremely effective. Any tank in that battlefield that's not on the American side is in danger. Because as soon as the M1 Abram sees you, you're pretty much screwed because it has first shot accuracy. It's always looking around at two kilometers away from it and it hits with 90% accuracy. So you're not getting away a firepower like this, even while moving. You guys are probably familiar with tungsten, one of the heaviest metals as well. Before uranium was used, tungsten was the first used metal for these darts for a tank. An extremely strong metal that does not want to get damaged but it is very brittle. And the biggest problem is that when it hits armor, instead of puncturing the armor, it turns flat and it gets duller and duller until it's smashed up. But the depleted uranium round changed the world because instead of getting dull when it hits armor, it actually sharpens itself and continues to stab the armor itself and goes farther and farther. Therefore, going more than 570 millimeters. Another interesting thing is that uranium is plentiful in the world and it's even more than tungsten. And even though it's better than tungsten in this case, it's more plentiful and cheaper. It is good to know that the uranium we're speaking of is not the same uranium that they make nuclear weapons with or the ones they used in nuclear power plants. This is uranium 238. And if they plan on using 238 in a nuclear bomb, they have to separate the uranium-235 isotopes, which is called uranium enrichment. The enrichment needed for a nuclear bomb is much higher than the enrichment needed for a nuclear power plant. Enriched uranium has a lot higher radioactivity as well. But the depleted uranium weapons use, it's not like it's healthy for you it still has extremely toxic things given off of it, especially when it explodes and all that dust goes everywhere. This metal is still toxic, so if it's shot in an area, that place is toxic to breathe in. If these rounds are being shot and you breathe, just know that you're breathing in some uranium in the air. And that has been reported in Afghanistan and Iraq. And doctors say it mostly affects a person's kidney. These kidney damages has happened in the people of Afghanistan, the people of Iraq, and the American soldiers in both of these countries. In the Yugoslavian war, more than 10,000 of these rounds were fired in Kosovo, and the same negative effects has been seen in the people of this country. So how does this affect humans? Anywhere this round explodes, just know that it's not a safe place to just freely breathe, and you're gonna have negative effects to your kidneys if you do. Even though depleted uranium has caused a lot of damage, but it also made history. After this round, the importance of tanks has gone down by a lot. When a military leader realizes if he sends his tanks to a certain battlefield and they could be destroyed with one round, that makes them second guess. You're gonna lose millions of dollars in equipment if you just send this tank into a battlefield because it can get eliminated with something much cheaper than itself. So it's better if we keep the tanks parked. This was the beginning of destroying the reputation of tanks, and they have never seen the light of day anymore. Another reason that tanks aren't as affected as they used to be is that there are anti-tank missiles, missiles that are much cheaper than the tank itself and they're very exact so they can be fired from a very long distance and exactly hit the target while it's moving. Therefore, it gives another excuse that tanks are useless in modern warfare. 
Tanks were useful in a time where bullets were the only opposition. So now it's not good where you have rounds that literally puncture the armor. Even with all that, a lot of tanks are still being produced, even the M1 Abrams. And even though this round has a lot of negative health effects, it's still being used, even in the Russian-Ukraine war. So there is a reason that they called these weapons deadly darts. There is also another nickname given to this weapon, tank killer. Not only did this weapon destroy tanks, but it also destroyed its reputation, where the military questions if they should take the tanks out or not. Some believe this is the same thing that's going to happen to fighter jets because there's a lot of cheaper and better options and it's not having these things fight in a battle. What do you guys think will replace these types of extremely expensive weapons?